place is off the chain. Like, you guys really, really are amazing. Really. And being a former member of a market council, I know how much work and time and effort and energy has to go into creating this event. So really give them a big round of applause, all of them. Okay, so my name is Kristen Atkins. You know my husband, Dave. Um, like he said earlier, we have three beautiful daughters. Cassidy's 14 going into high school. What? Um, Sadie is 11, she's our ice hockey player, and then we have a little one, Addison, we call her Tank and Shakeology Baby. Um, she's going to be 8 in August. Um, I am a former elementary school teacher. I taught kindergarten first and second grade in Valhalla, New York for 13 years. Um, and when Mickey asked me a few days ago to be the coach success story, I went into panic mode. I was like, crap. I don't know if I have big enough accolades as a coach to feel worthy enough of speaking here. And, um, you know, I've done the things, I've walked the stage, um, I've had the recognition, you know, we've grown a great team, um, and all of that is amazing. But I really had to start to think about what success meant to me, because I do think that success looks different for everybody. Am I right? Everybody has their own reasons for coming into this. Um, so I had to dig deep and think about it. And when I thought about what success was for me personally, it really meant freedom. It meant freedom of choices. And I think Mickey was saying, you know, freedom with time. Um, it meant being more present with your family, right? It meant um, being more joyous and happy in the everyday. Um, it meant free of emotions that maybe had been dragging you down. So I thought about the old me. Right. Um, I was the chubby girl in high school, size 12, 14. I had very skinny friends, and I think they liked to keep me close by because that made them feel good. <laughs> um, I called myself the chubby bridesmaid. I had struggled with dieting and negative self-image probably most of my young to adult life. Um, I watched my mom diet. She was an aerobics teacher when I was a little girl, but then owned a deli later on in life and ended up becoming obese. So. My role model was somebody that was constantly trying all the new fads, right? We were always dieting and, and depriving and then um, binging, and that was all I knew to be like, and I hated myself. I didn't know how to love myself. So when I think of success and I think about what Beachbody has done, right, it's not just the weight loss that changes. It's your whole mindset. It's, it's success is loving yourself. Success is freeing yourself of all of your past and finally figuring it out. And this beach body is sustainable, it is doable, it is the right way to live a healthy lifestyle. It's the way you want to teach your kids, right? And your families. So that's what success meant to me. So when I came up on the stage, that's what I was thinking about. So Dave started this business before I did. And I know we're predominantly female now and that's not normal, but I wanted nothing to do with beach body. He was like, Chris, you gotta do this with me. I was like, don't come near me with that beach body crap. I want nothing to do with it. He's like, I'm gonna sign you up as a coach. I gotta get to this thing called Emerald and I'll make more money. And I'm like, I'm like, dude, we have three little kids. I'm a full-time teacher. I work with little kids all day. I go, you see this imaginary plate that's so full? You know, everybody has that plate, so full, right? Um, I can't put anything else on it. No way, don't include me in it. Do your own thing. But it caused problems in our relationship early on. He would walk around on his phone and be walking into walls and just be on it all night. And I'm like, dude, I'm, I, all I wanted to do is all I wanted to do is go crash in bed at night and watch Real Housewives of Orange County. That's all I wanted to do. And so, you know, I was like, show me the money, show me the money, right? Does anyone have a spouse like that? Like this beach body crap, show me the money. Like, yeah, okay, <laughs> that was me. So he had a vision early on that I couldn't see. And he had to sit me down one day and say, Chris, I think this can change our life. Because we were in a really bad place at that time. Physically and financially, we were living paycheck to paycheck. And I wanted so badly to believe him, and I didn't. And I said, okay, babe, whatever, sure. You know, <laughs> um, but I did do the workouts, right? And at that point, we had had three pregnancies. I gained 50 pounds all three times. I would have thought by the third pregnancy, I would have gotten like the hint, like, girl, come on, you hate doing this and starting over again, but I did it. So I did the workouts with him. He was doing the business, and again, I wanted nothing to do with the business. 
Um, and I had gained 50 pounds all three times. And you know when you, when you have kids and you're a mom? Who's mom's in here? You lose yourself, right? You lose yourself in the mom hustle. And you forget who you were, who you want to be. You forget everything, right? So I looked in the mirror. I remember looking in the mirror after having one of my daughters. I don't even remember which one. And saying, I guess this is just how I'm going to be. Like, it was so hard in my head and overwhelming to think about what it would take to even get back to truck chubby Kristen, you know, the chubby bridesmaid. I, I was overwhelmed. And it wasn't until 2013 when life happened. You know when they say life happens to you? My mother um, was diagnosed with what they thought was breast cancer. And um, a quick PET scan showed that the cancer was actually all throughout her body. And it was fast, it was furious, and it was an unknown type of cancer. They couldn't even figure it out at Sloan Kettering. Within four months, she was gone. And talk about a gut check, right? Like, where did that come from? That's not supposed to happen, she's young. And the crazy part is that her mother also died around the same age, my grandmother. And I remember so many times in my life, my mom being like, oh, I wish grandma could see you, you know? And I looked at my girls, and I was like, no. This is not gonna happen to me. I'm not gonna let this happen again. So at that time, I was like, Dave, put me in a challenge group. I'm going all in. Like, I need to do this now, and it's bigger than weight loss. This is life. This is your health. You guys, if we don't have our health, we have nothing. So it became bigger than me, and I went all in. And that's when T25, who's done T25, Sean T? T25 was launched and um, we ran, I went my first challenge group and I had two of my first customers. And I remember it brought me back to life. It, I fell in love with the process of, you know, checking in with people. People were getting results. People were happy. They were feeling amazing. Um, and I woke up every day before heading into work and I couldn't wait to check in with everybody and see how they were doing. Everybody was getting results. So, and then all of a sudden that plate that I was holding that was so full, I made time for my beach body business because it became important to me, right? And when you find something you love, you're gonna make time for it. So when you say, I don't have time for this, or when people tell you, you know, people that are non-coaches are gonna think, I don't have time for this. You do, because when it's something that brings you alive and is like filled with people like this, you make time for it. So on the other hand, I was a teacher, and I had been there for many years. Um, I, ha I was in a toxic environment. I had some wonderful people I worked with, and I had some not so wonderful people I worked with. Does anyone have that? Okay. <laughs> so as I started to grow my business, I put myself out there more on social media. And then the talking started, and it got louder and louder, and I was the food Nazi, and how dare her think I'm fat to ask her to be in my challenge group. And you know, it just was bad, you guys. It was bad, and I cried a lot, and I didn't want to go back to work, and that's when Dave's like, double down, get into personal development. So I did, I doubled down, that's when I was like, I started reading You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Does anyone read that book? <laughs> my favorite book. It was my first personal development book. I tell all my coaches to read it. And I remember reading it and being like, holy crap, why don't more people do this? Like, it, why don't more people read these books? Like, it changed everything. My mindset, like, my belief, I like, I, I loved myself. I was like, I can do anything, you know, the more you read it, right? So um, if you think you don't need personal development, you probably need it more than you know. <laughs> so um, we started going to live events, things like this, right, where you're surrounded by energy and amazing people and you hear the stories. We went to Summit and I remember seeing people on stage paying off their mortgages and leaving their jobs. I'm like, that attorney's leaving her job? That teacher is leaving her job? I'm like, is that possible? Is that like even an option? Dave's like, yeah, anything's possible, you know, you gotta, you gotta work at it. But yeah, and I was like, can I do that? <laughs> You know, that's when it started to become like real to me, like, oh my God, this could be a possibility. And I, and I remember saying to Dave, no babe, stuff like that doesn't happen to people like us because my mindset was so not there. But then once I started personal development and started immersing myself in events, I saw what was possible. 
and I believed. If they can do it, why not me, right? So at that point, we came up with a plan. We, were, we had $100,000 in debt, like Dave said, um, and we had to figure out a way to get that paid off, and then I can walk away from my job. So thank you, Dave Ramsey and the Total Money Makeover. Yeah. <laughs> um, it took two years, and it took, I'm not gonna sugarcoat this, it took discipline, it took consistency, it took a lot of saying no to things, um, it took sacrifices, it took tears, um, but we did it. We made it happen and we paid off all of our debt. And I am going to read the disclaimer real quick. <laughs> I know he's in the back there. Team Beachbody does not guarantee any level of success or income from Team Beachbody. A coaching opportunity coaches independently depends on his or her efforts, diligence, and skill. All right. So we did it. Um, as we were paying off the debt, we had our plan of when I was going to leave teaching, right? And I would picture it. I would picture the day when I would walk into my principal's office and be like, I am not coming back here, ever. <laughs> and guys, on the hard days when those people were making fun of me or when I was having a hard time or when I didn't want to show up in my business, that vision and the, the how I felt, like I, all I could do is picture myself driving the driveway, blasting music and being like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And it kept me going, it was my vision and it kept me going on the hard days. You guys, I was done and I'm just gonna give you a little background. We used to fight a lot about who's gonna take the next day off when the kids were sick. And I, I, will, I won't tell you I didn't love teaching. I love working with kids and teaching, but it was all the other stuff that was surrounding it. I was done with having my kids say, mommy, why can't you be the lunch volunteer for once? Mommy, why didn't you come to the show? Mommy, why couldn't you come watch me in the Halloween, Halloween parade? You know, like, mo like, I couldn't take vacations when I wanted to take vacations. They told me when I was gonna take vacation, right, teachers? You go on the most expensive weeks of the year, like where they triple, like nobody's leaving. So I was done with all of that, you guys. I was done with being surrounded by toxic people that were doing nothing to better themselves. This is where I wanted to be. This is where the people, I was like, this is where I belong. These people want to be better in their lives. They want to be happier. They want to be healthier. They want to have better relationships. This is what it's about. So we came up with our plan. We had our date when we were, I was gonna be retiring and it was exciting, but it was still a little ways off. In the middle of this, my husband, who follows Eric Thomas, the ET, the hip hop preacher. You guys know who he is? Motivational speaker. Dave is obsessed with him. He's amazing. He was coming to New York and Dave's like, Chris, we gotta go see him. We gotta, we gotta go see ET, he's coming, we gotta go see him. I'm like, all right, all right. I figured it's a night out of the house, get away from the kids, fine. So. We go, and there's a whole side story of how we met him, but I'm not gonna get into all that because I think Mickey's timing me. But um, <laughs> we went, okay. We went and we sat in the audience and E.T. was talking about letting go of your rope. You know, we all hold on to what's comfortable and safe, right? And he was like, you need to let go of the rope, of the, sec the security net that you're holding on to that's holding you back from being who you should be from releasing you of your full potential, right? And, and doing things that make you happy. You're holding on because it's comfortable. And I was looking around as he's talking at all these people and I'm like, I think he's talking to me. <laughs> I was like, he's talking directly to me. So we get in the car and leave and we're all fired up. And I'm like, Dave, I'm leaving my job this week. He's like, what, what? <laughs> I'm like, E.T. was talking to me, I'm leaving, I'm done. He's like, well, that, that was not the plan. We had like another six to eight months that we, we need to save more money and the, you know, the, the man. And I'm like, nope, you brought me. I was there, he was talking to me. I'm like, the food Nazi is out, bye. So, so in two weeks time, I was driving down the driveway to my school with the music blasting like I had pictured for that whole year before. And I walked into my principal's office and I said, I'm sorry, I'm not coming back, I'm resigning. I'm gonna be doing beach body full time. She knew I did it. She gave me her blessing and she was so proud of me and you guys are not gonna believe what happened next. She freaking bought the 21 day fix from me. And I became her coach that day. She did say, don't give me those shakes though. Don't give me those shakes. And I was like, you know what? I just told you I'm leaving three weeks before school starts. I'll cut you a break. <laughs> so, so my message is, um, and there's another picture. Sorry. 
So this was uh, that September, the girls' first day back to school, and it would have been my first day back, my 14th year of teaching, but I never went back. So it was mom's first day of freedom. <laughs> so my hope for all of you guys is that you understand that no, none of this is easy. It does take work. I will not, never sugarcoat that for anybody. Um, but if you are consistent and if you don't stop and you keep doing all the things and you let go of your rope that holds you back, whatever that may be, because I know you're all holding on to some sort of rope, right, because it's safe. My hope for you is that you find whatever your success is, whatever that looks like for you and your family, because the opportunity is right here. You have it in the palm of your hand. Do not waste it. Thank you. <laughs>